We'll start up front with Jim, then go to Jeff. Get a mic up front to him, please. Thank you. Jim Peltz, LA Times. Kevin, <clears throat> can you just talk about the satisfaction of so soon putting Stuart Haas in the chase? Well, you know, it's it's like Gene said, There's there's been a lot of skepticism. Skeptics, uh, as as we've gone through the the off season, and and for me, I just honestly, you hear it, and I paid attention to it during the off season, obviously. But um, as we've gone through the first few weeks, you just you try to put yourself in your your own little world. And uh, the last three days, I've I've sat in my hotel room and from about 7:30 on, and said, "All right, how are we going to mess this up?" Uh, as as we go through, just you know, trying to think of everything. Uh, that that we that we could do wrong, and, and Rodney's probably annoyed with me as I've come in the holler and and asked about five thousand questions about probably the dumbest things he's ever ever heard of. But um, all in all, I mean, you know, Gene has given us every resource um, with that you can imagine. Tony has been just very supportive of of whatever we wanted to do and rodney has put together a, a group of guys that that believes in in what we're doing and um you know our dates were were really good as as we went through time uh, to to try to uh put this whole thing together and i feel like you know i feel like we've known each other for for 10 years um because he's he's a relationship guy and it's taught me a lot about you know trying to you know make sure you know who you who the people are and, and what they're doing and support them and um, you know we've we've had some some hiccups through the first week I felt like um, we were going to have those I think everybody anticipated those and nobody's pointed fingers and and nobody said what's well, this guy's But if, if I guarantee you, if you put everybody, you lined them all up, there would not be one person on that team that knew everybody's name, even him, <laughs> whether even if it was the pit crew or the shop guys. Um, so um, we've been to a lot of dinners. We've been spent a lot of time with, with the road guys and, and tried to spend some time in the shop. And I've heard Gene say this as, as he's walked through the race shop, the enthusiasm is contagious at, at SHR. And, and I think um, that is very important. And, and you're only as good as the people that you have around you. And I'm very honored to drive that car into victory lane in week, in, in, in week two um, and, and have all the, these guys uh, uh, believe in us from, from top to bottom, whether it's Gene or Brett or Tony or Eddie or whoever the guys that, that we're all a part of, of putting all these pieces together and, and making all this happen. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite an honor to, to be a part of that. Okay, we'll go Jeff, Reed, then Tom. Jeff Clark from USA Today. Kevin, obviously um, you make a, a big decision to come over here, and um, you can hope it turns out a certain way, but you don't really know. And even when you guys were fast in December and even fast this weekend, it doesn't, you, you don't really know whether it's going to happen. Now that, that you're already in victory lane, what kind of validation is it in your mind or, you know, about your own personal decision to take that <coughs> leap and, and make a big move that was probably the biggest decision of your career? Well, I feel like as as we've gone through time, whether it be you know selling the race teams or you know going and shutting everything down or um, changing teams and and changing jobs and and doing all the things that uh, decisions that we've done, I feel like um, you talk to your friends, you talk to your family, and you talk to the people around you, and I just it wasn't that I couldn't be a part of a championship before; it's just that we hadn't won a championship before and. Um, you know, we do this to win, and and you want to win races, and and we've been fortunate to do that in the past. But in in this arena, it's about winning a championship and and trying to be competitive on a, on a weekly basis. And um, you know, I felt like just I needed I needed that enthusiasm to show up to work, and you know, I get to do that do this with a lot of my friends, um, with with Tony. Uh, I feel like we've had a great relationship in in the past, and he's driven my nationwide cars. And um, you know, I feel like as as we've as we go through situations, uh, I've learned I've learned that Tony is one of the smartest people that I know. I told I, I sat at a roulette wheel with with Tony 
uh, in Vegas about four weeks ago, and I learned he's just short of rain, man. He's he's a very smart person, but he doesn't he doesn't say anything. He sits there and he listens to everything that you say, and he takes all these things in, and you know pretty soon you're sitting there and I know it's going to come back I'm going to say something uh, and he's going to remember it four or five six weeks down the road he's going to say well remember back in this meeting when you said this why do you think this today so I've learned um, I learned a lot sitting in our in our first competition meeting last week and, and I've learned um, you know just sitting in the in the in the competition meetings that we've that we've had um, that he's he's a he's a listener and you know, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And, and um, you know, I think as as we go through through time, you know, I've sat there and, and talked with Tony about what's what's expected, and, and he expects me and, and Rodney to help lead the charge on on the competition side as to what needs to be the direction. And and so, you know, when when he just basically said that, he's like, all right, well. Uh, right off the bat, I felt comfortable with with speaking my mind and 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 saying, you know, let's let's do this, and I think that gives that gives these guys a lot of leeway to uh, to do the same thing. Okay, we'll go Reed, Tom, and then Michael. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Kevin, when you get to the track on race day, and pretty much everybody in the garage is saying the four is the car to beat, the four is the car to beat. It's and, terrible, and you're almost expected to win. Yeah. Does that put any any more pressure on you? I called him last night and I said. I don't know what we need to do, but we need to make sure that our that our road guys don't just devastate our pit crew guys as we get here today because everything's gone so good. We need to make sure that everybody's a cohesive bunch and it's not, like I said, nobody's pointed the fingers at anybody, if anything. And even if something would have happened today, nobody, in my opinion, would have pointed the fingers and, and said anything. But, um, you know, you just everybody's just been so supportive of of each other but um it's a lot of pressure when you have a fast car and especially so early into the situation that we're in with a new team and new people and everything that's involved and you just you try to control um you know it's it's our responsibility as as driver and and crew chief to control everybody's emotions and expectations and it's really for for me it's made me look at things a lot differently um than it, than i have in the past just because everybody's looking at you you know waiting for you to to say something or do something and they look at him the same way to to say something or do something and um we could have flipped this track upside down and i don't know that rodney would have gotten gotten excited about anything so that's good for me because i'm very excitable um you know in in the right situation okay tom go ahead Kevin, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Congratulations on the win, guys. You said earlier, Kevin, that you thought about 15 ways to lose the race last night or things that could happen. It seemed like you had 15 restarts in the last part of, part of the race. Was there any concern with so many restarts that, that something might happen, that the field might wad you up or you, you might slip or... I always concerned just for the fact that you know the restarts can be can be crazy and you're very vulnerable as as the leader to uh especially the the third place car to uh to anticipate what you're doing and Joey had been knocking on the on on the bumper all day so for me going into the last restart um you see all that speedy dry down there and they didn't take very much time to they just blew everything into the bottom lane they blew everything onto the apron in turn three and four. You guys couldn't see that. And I'm like, man, that's my line. It's full of speedy dry and crumbs uh, as as we go into turn three. So you just you try to block all that out. And, and really, for me, it was all about not spinning the tires. The, the, I spun the tires a little bit early in the, in the uh, four or five restarts from the end. And, and the 22 was able to, uh, to get going. But... Um, I asked him for the restart ratios and and uh about what two months ago and and they all sent me an email back and said, "Are you sure and I'm like, "Yes, this is what we need. this is what we need to do and and they have had the confidence in in just to to build those those ratios and and those things and uh I feel like um you know today we had had good restarts and and were able to make it happen okay, Michael It's my favorite part about your interview, Tom. When you get down, you're like, thank you. <laughs> I'll say thank you before you answer. Right. Hi, Kevin. Michael Knight with the Arizona Republic. 
As great as it is to win, could you talk about your feelings to have A.J. Foyt present the trophy to you? I asked A.J., I said, have you seen George Schneider? Because, uh, you know, George um, was, was obviously uh, a part of driving A.J. stuff, and A.J.'s a legend, uh, whether it's uh, stock cars or Indy cars, and, and to see him in victory lane is, is like, um, you know, expecting Smoke to, to shave every week and cut his hair and do all the th and show up on time i haven't been to anything where he showed up on time but uh you know so seeing aj in victory lane shaking hands and and handing out hats and doing all the things he did and smiling about it was like all right i don't know what they paid you but you're happy <laughs> so but aj is just a, a legend in in the racing world and and to be able to uh to stand there next to him was was pretty awesome okay we got next one stan Stan Creekmore with RPM.com. <clears throat> Sorry, having a name issue now. The crew chief. Rodney. Rodney. Apologize. How much did you pick Kevin Harvick's brain to put this car together in a way that you felt he could win this race? Um, in all honesty, we've been to three tests uh, and two races now, and I don't think I've asked him one time how he wanted to set a car up yet. So, <laughs> you know, it's our job. He he doesn't need to be worried about that. He needs to get in the car and drive as fast as he can and, and you know, not have to worry about it. But on the other hand, we've had good communication through all of it. Um, with the rules uh, changing tremendously and all this stuff going on, it's really, really hard to understand right now for a lot of people. And um you know it, it it's going to take some time for outsiders to understand it and and um you know it it's just a lot going on and um but you know we've just been really fortunate to all um you know like i said they they've let me kind of you know built the team the way that that i felt it needed to be built and the guys at the shop have done a great job and we've just built fast race cars and and um we've been fortunate uh, everywhere we've been so um you know everybody else is is you know really really good in this garage and um you know it's hard to to stay on top and really hard to keep your cars in, in a competitive mode so we'll just have to keep working hard and hopefully you know keep that advantage we got one more right here down in front then we'll go to bob and dustin did you have, yeah oh yeah uh, Ryan O'Hara, SpeedwayMedia.com. Um, my question for, for both um, Kevin and Rodney, uh, what are the benefits specifically with Stuart Haas Racing, like um, with the atmosphere that you're in now, um, how much of a benefit has it been to be a part of this team compared to Michael Waltrip Racing and RCR? Well, for for me, you have a you have a three time champion in, in Tony Stewart. You have Kurt Busch, who's won a ton of races and a championship, and and uh, you have Danica, who who wants to to get better and, and like a sponge to uh, to absorb everything that's going on around her. And then you bring in you know three new crew chiefs uh, to to uh, to drive each other. And but the crew chiefs are going to push each other. The engineers are going to push each other. The drivers are going to push each other. And as long as that that relationship between everybody stays healthy, and and that's where that's where our our uh, our owner down there is going to come into play and, and make it make sure that that uh, you know everybody is is doing what they need to do to, to drive each other in a in a healthy way uh, to to be. You have a you have a you have a three time and and uh, you have Danica who and you 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 need to win it might. Be or when it might be your last one. So um, just over everything that's going on around, being around the people and, and seeing the enthusiasm that, that comes with everything. Um, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a job to everybody. It seems like everybody wants to be here and is having fun doing it. So it's um, it's just a it's just a different different atmosphere for me. And, and the enthusiasm is just through the roof. Okay, we'll go Bob, Dustin, David. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, Kevin, was there any part of this day or the car or the race that you felt was similar to your win here in November or because it's a different team and somewhat different cars, is it just totally, totally different? 
You know, it's like Rodney was talking earlier. You have to have a very open mind to just not being set in your ways. Um, you look at the, the springs and, and ride heights and shocks and pieces and parts. They're, you know, you, one's in Arizona and one's in North Carolina. I mean, they're so far different that um, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even uh, recognize the, 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 the two setups to, to be in, in, the, in the same spot in Victory Lane. So um, it's, just a, it's just a different vibe and different feeling, and, and um, you know, nothing, nothing is really the same compared to what it was in the fall. Dustin, next question. Dustin Long, MRN.com. I have one for Kevin and Rodney. Um, Kevin, obviously, last restart. If any race, if you're the leader, you're going to get in the essence of win is what it's all about. Joey made a bold move. Was that any more of a, was that what you expect? Was that any more bolder than, than, than what it might have been? Or is there any way to, to tell? Be, I, he kind of said, you know, he said on pit lane, it's like, you know, what's the point of finishing second or third? Yeah, well, that that's that's what we're all here for is to try to win races, and I knew it was coming, yeah. um, you know, because he was able to anticipate a couple of those restarts before and, you know, knock the back bumper in and, and, and do the things that he, he needed to do to, to try to have a chance to win. So I knew the later that it got, the more aggressive that it was going to get. So. You just you try to go into that corner and, and prepare yourself to to get hit, um, you know, and 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 you hope that it doesn't sacrifice the guy on the outside of of you, but you have to put yourself in a position to defend yourself, um, you know, to to get hit. And, and um, I didn't crowd him. Uh, I felt like I gave him a lane, and I felt like if I could just get myself into the first corner and hit the throttle, I was going to come out. Um, ahead of them, just because of the fact that I, that that we were we were able to turn sooner all day, and get in a throttle sooner on the restart. So I knew going down into that corner, I just didn't need to get spun out, and um, so I let him have his lane. And I felt like that was going to put the the 88 in a bad spot, so I gave him a lane to to do what he needed to do and take his chance. But I felt like if we could just keep rolling, we were going to be okay. Thank you, and, and Rodney. Obviously, this new format of essentially winning and getting into the chase, what kind of an additional, I guess, tool in the toolbox does that allow you, or, or I guess flexibility potentially could that allow you to do at some of these races? Uh, obviously, the 88, it, until those cautions look to be stretching it, its fuel a little bit more than most people, and certainly they had that room to do so. How, how might it help you or you know, the, the, for the next 20-some races? Well, I mean, as far as the tools, all of our stuff worked really well today and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, our our thought process isn't going to change at all. Um, you know, we we have a team that, uh, you know, we want to build the nicest cars and have the nicest equipment, and we want to win every practice and sit on the pole and win the race, and that's never going to change. Um, you know, we've got a lot of learning still to do. We've got a lot of growing still to do, just like Kevin said, um, you know, I feel like uh, we just got to get to know each other better. Everybody on the team uh, keep making our stuff better, and, and um, you know we'll be you know even more competitive when we when we can do that. Okay, we'll take a question from David, then go to the back. Caravella NASCAR dot com. Uh, Rodney, everybody's been kind of eyeing you guys since the test in in December, and and I wonder in this day and age when we hear about how tighter the box is getting, how do you find areas to build a car to get set as head as ahead of the field as you guys were then, as you guys and as you guys were again today? Well, I mean, um, you know, when we went to that Charlotte test, we actually took a car that was raced last year and and uh, changed some parts and pieces around on it and and. Um, you know, I have to admit, I was on top of the truck ready to puke before Kevin made the first lap at Charlotte and just thinking, this is either going to be really good or it's going to be really, really bad. And, um, you know, uh, we talked before that session at Charlotte, and, he, you know, he asked me, what do you think somebody's going to run? And I said, you know, probably a 2780 or something like that. And he goes, oh, I think a... Uh, you know, 2018, well, then he run like a 2770 his second lap, and it's like, holy cow. But, um, you know, I think it's just been more of a, for me, it's been adrenaline and uh, confidence that, um, you know, that that we can do this and um, that we will. And, um, you know, it's it really just feeds off of that every day, um, you know, working 17 18 hours on some days i go home i don't even feel tired so 
um, you know, it's the drilling will wear off at some point, but but uh, hopefully we can keep it going. Okay, we'll take a question in the back, then come up front to Mark. Hi, Dominic. Got to go in for the racing experts.com. Actually, a question for both Kevin and Rodney. So now that you guys have won and virtually locked yourself into the chase, does this change the way you prepare for Las Vegas or any of the races before the chase in September? I don't think so. I, I think the car's already in the trailer, right? <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll load that one in the truck and hope for the best as as we get to uh, to Las Vegas. So it just you know for for him I think it allows him to stretch fuel windows and and do a few things and and um, you know for for the guys in the shop it, it allows them to really broaden their horizon on on thought processes and things like that. Not just to be consistent and and um, you can you can really get aggressive on really everything. Did you want Rodney to follow up? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, um, our thought press process going into Vegas really isn't going to change. Um, you know, we feel like that the cars we're building right now are, are really good. And, and um, you know, thankfully we have a, a little bit of a test session on Thursday to be able to see what we've got. And if it's not good, we've got time to work on it. And, um, you know, we we've got to keep making ourselves better uh, we made too many mistakes this weekend and and um you know thankfully we were able to overcome that and um you know we've got um probably a day of celebration while we're in in vegas but we've got you know a few other days where we need to concentrate on what we're doing and, and making ourselves better and and going out there and trying to win the race okay we'll come up front to mark go ahead uh kevin uh did you feel on all those restarts at the end that if you just got a length on Junior, you, you had the car to hold him off? I felt like Junior had the, the second best car, um, but I was more worried about the 22 because I felt like he was able to anticipate the restart better than, than the second place car. So, you know, on the last restart, he was, was able to get inside of us and, and, and be able to, um, you know, make a charge going into turn one. And, and like I said earlier, the, my biggest thing was, was to make sure we just didn't get spun out. Uh, I felt like even in the middle of the racetrack, I, I just wanted to be pointed in the right direction to getting a throttle up off the corner. Okay, final two questions, Bob, and then Reed. Uh, Bob Piper, Sporting News. Uh, Rodney, as far as your crew goes, have all of them won races before, or was there any anybody there, do you think, in Victory Lane who had never been there before? Good question. I couldn't even tell you. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> we've all been working so hard, we haven't re really sat down and had conversations like that. Um, there is a couple guys that have been with me for a while, and, and then there's other guys that were – we're new to the team, a couple guys off the 39 last year and, and just different circumstances. But, um, you know, I don't really know. It, it'll be interesting to, to find that out here in about 30 minutes. But, uh, you know, no matter what, I'm sure they're happy and, um, and excited. Okay, last question, Reed. Go ahead. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Gene, could you give us a, an update on the Formula One application? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, we uh, After Daytona, we went over to uh, Geneva, Switzerland, and we met with the FIA. Uh, it was a actual formal sit-down meeting with about, I think, six or seven, uh, you know, various people involved in, in, in uh, the Formula uh, International Association of Automobiles in, in there. And, uh, uh, you know, they have, they have a, a very... Uh, when you call it formal way of, of processing applications in, in the sense that there is no application, but they, they wanted to meet with us, and, and it was about an a hour and a half uh, a meeting where they asked us a lot of questions about how we intend to do this, how do we intend to uh, pay for it, you know, what, you know what, what, what's logistics of how are you going to do this? And, uh, you know, we tried, we answered those questions as uh, best we could. I was there, Joe Custer was there, and Gunther Steiner was there. So, um, you know, they, 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 were, they were pretty intense. Uh, they 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 had a lot of good questions, and uh, I think what they did is they they take that information and then they evaluate it and then they make their recommendations. I think to the uh, uh, either I think it's uh, uh, the, the Formula One's owners association or the the next uh, you know group of people, and and uh, and the process goes on. Uh, they they said they were going to have a decision by you know obviously Friday. They notified us on Friday that no that 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 they were just one part of that decision-making process and and uh, that the 
um, that the decision making process would come later. They didn't give us an exact date, uh, but hopefully it'll be in in you know another week or two, maybe even longer. Uh, and from what I've learned at talking to other people, this is fairly normal. Uh, there's lots of uh, dates they have, but but uh, uh, you know they don't really make a decision until they're sure what they what the decision they want the decision to be. Gentlemen, congratulations on your win today. Good luck next week in Vegas. Thank you for your time.